Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Kevin Stone here and today we're going to be talking about uh, welding on aluminum and as you can see I've got Elon behind me. I've switched over from uh, TIG welding to a spool gun and this is a Miller uh, push spool gun. Um, kind of their entry level spool gun and uh, we're going to talk about some of the welding issues that I'm having and some of the issues with the equipment as well. So things I think could be a little better and things that I really like. So um, that's where we're at. That's what we're going to talk about. Some of the issues with this spool gun that I'd like to talk about. So this has a little lid and I'll pop that off and show you. It's got the two little wheels here and to actually get your wire fed, you'd pull this off, you put your spool on, you feed it through this lining tube. This lining tube comes into your spool wheels. So every time that I'm feeding the wire in here, I have to lift that wheel. It lifts on a lever, unscrew it, take the wheel out. It's a three piece wheel. So you got to watch that you don't lose your parts. Feed your wire into this liner, take the welding tip off, take the cap off and get it started. Then you can put this wheel back in you can pull the trigger, get your wire to start feeding, and then put it all back together. So it's quite an ordeal and it's a lot of downtime. The one issue I do have is that the roller has um, quite a bit of tension on it and, it's, and it actually has pretty aggressive teeth, which I don't like to see. I think they could have designed a better roller system in here that doesn't chew up the wire. Now, I, I, you probably can't see that on the camera, but the, the wire, when it comes out of the welding tip, is absolutely shredded. You can feel it with your nail. It's like a, a little mini tank ran over the wire. It's just shredded from the teeth of the rollers. And what happens with that is, is it starts to, uh, it's like a file. It turns the wire into a file. So it starts filing your liner down inside your welder. And, um, and uh, it's just, it's just and, and like I said, and the access is really bad to get your wire in. So I think that Miller maybe uh, could look at updating a better system, maybe, maybe a, a, a quick release where the lid would come off, expose the rollers so you could feed your wire in and then, and then snap it back into place. I think that's something that uh, their R&D department should certainly work into because anybody trying to get efficiency out of this little machine, um, you know, when, it, when it's dialed in and you've got your machine all dialed in and it works really good, but as soon as you start, uh, having to put a new roll of wire in or have a little bit of burn back issues or you know sometimes your your contact tip will get hot and uh, welding is pretty hot with aluminum and when your copper contact tip heats up it'll actually shrink a little bit and then it'll start pinching so the other issue is is you'll get a little bit of splatter from the heat and the splatter will start sticking around the contact tip and everybody knows as soon as you get splatter where the wires coming out it's gonna grab that wire and then it backs up inside the rollers and then you're just tearing into the whole machine and, and uh, can get pretty frustrating. Well, the things that I do like about the machine, so obviously you, um, you have better access to get into small, tighter areas. Um, it, the, it can, the settings can be dialed in quite nice. So you can, um, depending on your wire feed speed and your temperature, I'm working with 030, um, it's 4043 aluminum wire. You can get up inside the tight areas um, it's great for quick tacking, so you can do nice large tacks. Uh, you can just sit there, pile up your, your weld, so it's great for that. Um, and it's also good for production. TIG is slow, um, you gotta get set up, you gotta get both your hands in there. Um, you know, obviously you can get pretty quick with TIG, and, uh, but this allows you to free up one hand. So I can do all my welding with one hand, and if I need to push something, and push it into place. I can push it into place and get a nice hot tack on there and lock that into place. So that's nice for that. And the other thing is, is when I'm trying to get into these seams, I can dial this in so that the wire is actually penetrating into the surface of the aluminum. Another thing that you can do, which is really nice, some machines actually have settings on the gun itself where you can control the wire feed speed on the gun. I've seen that. Um, for me, the, the, the machine is nice and close. I can dial in the wire feed speed and the temperature and, um, and the gun picks up those settings and, and adjusts accordingly. And um, I can, you know, if it's a thin area and I don't want a too much penetration, I can back the wire feed speed off, back the heat off a little bit and, uh, and, do, and do a little colder weld. Or if I'm really wanting to punch in and get a strong weld, I can turn it up and, 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 and it's, 
it's really quick and convenient and, and that's really what a spool gun is good for is, is for speed and, uh, and quick and convenient. Now I don't know if you can see but the welding isn't pretty and there's a reason for that. So the reason uh, it looks so rough and there's lots of splatter and stuff is I'm actually tack welding um, and tack welding, tack welding, tack welding rather than just trying to run a big bead. Um, I'm finding that if I'm setting it up that I can run a bead, a nice bead, and do nice pretty welds, I'm not getting the penetration that I'm liking for the amount of grinding and cleanup that I'm doing. So I'm setting up the machine to punch into the metal and that, therefore I'm actually uh, just spot welding it in to make sure that it's um, almost welding from behind and, and, and out. But in the end, when I do all the finishing work that I wanna do, um, and, and you know, the fitting, is all over the place. You know, there, there's gaps. So some areas are tight. Some areas have a bit of a gap. The gap areas with the settings that I have, um, if you if you know what it's like having too much wire feed, um, having a gap, it just wants to open that hole up even more. When you're welding hot like I do and welding fast like I do, um, uh, you you got to be patient and just do light little tacks and fill in, and fill in gaps. So a little bit about the settings. Um, I've made Elon out of 100 wall thickness. So that's just uh, 025 or uh, 0125 or 12, 0.125 is eighth inch and this is 0.100. Um, on the machine here, I'm just a little below 1 eighth. There's uh, two settings on the Miller machines now. So on the outside, they have material thickness, which is a rough, a rough pre-setting that you can set your temperature to. Uh, and it'll tell you, you know, up to this machine will do up to 3 eighths thick welding. Um, on the inside is voltage, so I'm just a little above six, six on the voltage. Um, older machines used to tell you you were at you know 300 amps or 400 amps or whatever that was, uh, whereas these just give you a thickness. So uh, because I'm working with material that's just a little bit less than eighth inch and I'm set up on the spool gun for aluminum, that changes the settings inside the machine. So it's actually running hotter on an aluminum setting than a MIG setting. So um, a MIG setting of eighth inch is gonna do great for eighth inch thick steel, but aluminum absorbs heat a lot and disperses the heat a lot. And, uh, and so when you switch the, the settings over to aluminum, MIG aluminum on the machine, all the settings actually increase in heat. And it's really important that um, you want to be as close to the material thickness setting as, as the material that you're working with. And then for me, there is auto sets on here and I don't find that the auto sets are um, the way I like to weld. Um, you know, they're kind of a, 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 you know, for maybe somebody that isn't that, that experienced, you can just set the machine to auto set and it will give you a relative working wire feed speed and temperature. Uh, but for me, I like to get the wire punching a little harder and a little more material coming into the metal. And I, I like to actually run a little hotter than, than most people probably would for, for what I'm doing. So uh, I've got the material setting to uh, 1 8 inch, which is just a little bit hotter than the material I'm working with. And then I've upped the wire feed speed probably uh, maybe 10% uh, to increase the wire feed speed and punch into the metal that I'm working with. Uh, I'm gonna do a little down, down hand in here. This is the edge of his hairline. This will actually be all welded solid. And then we're gonna go back in and, and cut it with a grinding disc. And, and this will all look like molded metal rather than just layers of, of metal welded on there. So I don't know how well you can see this, but we've got a little bit of buildup where it's pushed up and stacked the weld at the top. And then as I've pulled, the very hot setting that I have has allowed the, the weld to kind of roll ahead of my puddle. So uh, um, this is what happens when you're welding too, too hot. So the shrinking just let the tack go right there. You heard a little pop and the tack popped right there. So this, if you can see the hollow in the weld, I'm not sure if you can, but that's called, um, it's rolling. And so it's a rolling edge of your weld puddle. So what it is is um, welding too hot and not traveling fast enough. And I've got a big puddle going and I've, I've let it roll down. And because it's so hot, it's creating a concave in the weld where it should be convex and stacking like where it was a little colder at the start. So turning my temperature down turning my wire feed speed down is gonna stop that uh, concave 
look, I'm okay because uh, the reason I'm okay with this is I'm actually going to grind most of that weld out and it's, um, I'm punching the weld down deep into the layer underneath because I have a lot of grinding to do for the shaping of this edge. So I want this edge to come back after grinding but still have metal in behind it after I'm done welding that, that keeps it as a strong um, thick material. If you're having trouble keeping up with your weld puddle and it's going a little concave as you travel, uh, you're just welding a little too hot and uh, slow your wire feed speed down, slow your temperature down, and you'll get a lot more control over your weld. For me, I'm just letting it roll in hot and fast, and uh, it's okay for what I'm doing, but I'm not trying to get a perfect weld. I'm just trying to get filler in deep in behind that so when I grind, I can uh, have some material to work with. When you're working with aluminum, it's good to start you want your tie-in to be into this weld. Now, if you're getting fancy, you could do a little grind there and, and you know make that so your tie-in is nice and clean. But what I like to do, especially with aluminum, is I'll start about a quarter inch, maybe even a half inch ahead of where I want to tie in. I'll start, I'll pull the trigger there, then I'll walk the temperature and, and the material back up into that so it's already hot by the time it gets there and that'll give me a good tie-in. Then I'll come back down over where, where I just walked. The, the melting will clean that up a little bit and then we'll just run down to the next tack here. So um, I don't know if we'll be able to catch that all on film, but I'll show you how I start a little ahead of the puddle, walk back into it and then finish my downhand to the next tack. So that's a little travel speed. You can see I started about a half inch ahead and walked back into it. And you can't tell that I did that, but what it does is give me a nice hot weld as I go to tie in. That'll, tie, that'll make your tie-ins a lot better. So if you're ever having problems with your tie-ins in aluminum, start a little bit ahead of where you want to tie in, pull the trigger, walk up into your tie-in, let it build up, and then start your weld puddle after that. You know, when you're gas welding or MIG welding, um, somewhere around 18 to 22 pounds of gas flow is plenty for steel. But when you're working with aluminum, I like to up my gas flow to about 35 pounds. Um, aluminum um, uh, likes to be clean. I'm not actually cleaning my work. Um, so I'm getting a lot more black soot. I'm not getting a whole lot of cleaning action around my puddle. Normally you would prep all the surface contamination and get a nice clean, um, a nice clean material surface. Uh, but I'm welding so hot and so fast that, uh, I, and, and I'm trying to just get a lots of bulk welding done that I'm not really worried about prepping all the little areas where I'm welding. Of course, if you want to do nicer, cleaner welds that are more visible, definitely prep your material, spend the time uh, on the prep, and that's gonna give you those really nice dimes and nice clean, shiny aluminum welds. Run a little bit more gas, um, 18 to 22 pounds, it's perfect for, uh, for steel, but up it to 30, 35 pounds, and you'll find uh, it'll work a lot nicer, a lot more cleaning, uh, and a lot more protection on aluminum. It's nice to be able to just switch hands. That's what's nice when you're not TIG welding. You've got a gun, you just need to pull the trigger. I'm gonna actually, a couple tacks broke, so I'm gonna just reheat those tacks, put a little fresh weld on it, and give it a smack to knock this down, um, take the gap out a little bit. I'm okay with the gap because I want different sized layers, but I don't want so much of a gap that it's actually making it hard to weld, so. If you're getting tacks that are breaking, you can see the distance between my tacks, definitely, run extra tack. So I, I just kind of threw this together and doing it as a demonstration purpose, but I should come back and do a tack like every two or three inches just to make those stronger. See, there's no tacks in here. If you don't want to break tacks, go in, tack it every three inch, good strong tacks. Then when you weld between tacks, you won't get tacks popping and breaking like you are here.
and now basically all of this is, uh, is ready to weld. Now if you were um, really wanting clean, nice fancy welds, would go in here with a wire wheel and we'd wire wheel all these seams. But again, I'm not worried about it because all of these welds, I have to come back in with a grinding disc and grind a groove into all these so it looks like it's molded metal rather than just welded metal. Certain areas that have a big gap uh, or little holes like that. Um, there's two ways you can, there's a trick um, that you can do. So you can take a TIG rod and you can actually stuff the tip of the TIG rod, rod in there and then you can go in with your welder and you can use that TIG rod as an extra filler. So as your wire feed is melting and your TIG rod melts, it'll fill a larger gap like that real quick and you won't be punching through as easy. Certain areas like right here, this piece didn't layer over this piece properly. Um, so I have a, actually a gap in there. And um, because I'm welding so hot, it just wants to blow through that gap. So that's gonna take a bit of patience. I'm gonna have to build up over each tack and let the tack roll off each other, let it cool, hit it, let it cool, let it cool, and, and just work my way down. Again, I could take a TIG rod, stick it along there, and kind of weld right over the TIG rod, because all I'm worried about is actually just getting some filler in there for grinding. Hey guys, that's a wrap for uh, today's episode, and uh, I hope you learned a little bit about aluminum welding and aluminum spool guns, and maybe even some of the settings on the Miller welder. If you have any questions about welding, uh, whether it be aluminum, steel welding, TIG welding, uh, feel free to hit the comments below, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you soon.